Welcome to Chemical Bonding, Part 1 of 2. In this video and the next, we're going to look at how different elements join together to form compounds, which we've said are new substances with new properties. This joining together of elements is called bonding. In this first part, we're going to focus on the bonding that occurs between a metal and a nonmetal. So let's look at an example. We have sodium, which is a metal, and chlorine. Put together, make sodium chloride, or table salt. So what's happening with the bond here? Well, let's look at these elements separately. We have Na, and we have Cl, sodium and chlorine. The first thing I'm going to do is look at their valence electrons, because the valence electrons are the ones that are going to be involved in bonding. So sodium has one valence electron. Chlorine has seven. there's chlorine's valence electrons drawn in. That's my first step. Now where to go from here? Well I know from the octet rule that all elements want a full valence shell. They all want eight valence electrons. And the next thing I'm going to do is look at those valence electrons in more detail. So we're going to write the SPDF uh, electron configuration for each one of these. Sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Chlorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. So how can I get these both to have eight electrons in their outermost s and p sublevels? Well, here's what I can do. Sodium can give its electron to chlorine, or chlorine takes it from sodium, whichever way you want to look at it. But here's what that does. If sodium loses that one electron, it loses the 3s1. That puts it at a full second principal energy level, s and p sublevels. So 2 and 6, 8 total valence electrons. So sodium is good now. Chlorine, something similar will happen. We go from 3p5 to 3p6. And now the third principal energy level, s and p sublevels, are full. 2 and 6, or 8 valence electrons. So these both have 8 valence electrons, which means that they are satisfied. They both satisfy the octet rule. We can represent this with something called a Lewis structure for the entire compound, which is different from these Lewis dot structures that we just did for the individual elements. So let's take a look at what the Lewis structure looks like for this. I'm going to start by writing sodium in brackets and sodium lost an electron so it has a single positive charge because it lost that one negative electron so I write the charge in here then right next to it I'm gonna put chlorine in brackets and chlorine has eight dots now because it took sodium's one electron dot so I'm gonna draw in chlorine's eight valence electron dots Sodium, I'm leaving a zero because it really has an empty one that it abandoned when it lost this electron. And chlorine has a negative charge because it gained a negative electron. So this Lewis structure tells us a couple things. First, that these became ions. Sodium is a positive ion, chlorine's a negative ion. What's keeping them together? Well, it's the attraction between the positive and the negative charges. This attraction between the positive charge of the positive ion and the negative charge of the negative ion results in what we call an ionic bond. Now in a sample of salt, we're not going to have just one sodium atom and one chlorine atom. There's going to be a whole bunch of them. So there's actually a little bit more to this interaction. Table salt, sodium chloride, does not exist as just two atoms bound to each other. It actually looks a little bit like this. So this is a crystal structure. And in fact, the crystal structure results from those positive and negative charges. The smaller blue circles in this diagram represent the sodium ions. So these are all positively charged. Positive, 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 so on and so forth. You get the idea. What happens is that each positive charge is attracted to a negative charge that is surrounding it. So if we look at, for example, this one right here, 
that I'm hovering my mouse around, this positive charge, it's surrounded by this negative charge, this negative charge, this one, and this one. Now, this negative charge is also surrounded by a positive, a positive this way, a positive this way, a positive this way, a positive this way. When we talk about properties of ionic compounds in the future, this idea of the crystal structure is going to be very important. The salt was a fairly simple example. Let's look at a second example, especially in terms of how to draw a Lewis structure for this. Let's look at magnesium and fluorine. Okay? These two elements, and we'll see what kind of bond they form and how they form a bond, and how we can draw the Lewis structure for them. Magnesium has two valence electrons. Fluorine has seven. Fluorine can reach eight valence electrons to satisfy the octet rule if it takes one of magnesium's electrons. But that leaves magnesium with still one electron left, so magnesium has not reached a full valence shell. It needs to get rid of this other electron somehow. And it can't give it to this fluorine because the fluorine is already at eight. So what happens now? Well, what we can do is realize that there's more than one fluorine present. And so if there's another fluorine nearby, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, electrons on that fluorine, it will take the remaining electron for magnesium. So we're going to get this one going that way. Now magnesium has lost these two, so it's going to be at a full valence shell for the next uh, inside layer of electrons. And each one of these fluorines is at eight to satisfy octet rules for themselves. The only question remaining is how do we represent this with a Lewis structure? So let's do that. I'm doing the Mg first because that's the positive ion. The cation always comes first. Now what's the charge on magnesium? Well, it lost two electrons. So it's going to have a positive two charge, or two plus charge. I'm also not going to draw any dots around magnesium because it lost both of its original valence electrons. Next I need to represent the fluorine. So let's put that in. We have fluorine. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons because it gained one to have the full eight. It has a negative one charge because it gained one electron. But there are two fluorines. So I'm going to represent that by putting a large two in front of the bracket with the fluorines. What this tells me is that for every magnesium ion in magnesium fluoride, there are two negative fluorine ions. And the crystal structure that this substance makes would reflect that ratio.